Do you want to hear a story? People have always interested me, reader my sister's father, a older frugal grey-haired man named Howard. To this day he drives a beat-up old Ford that has 22 rusting bullet holes in the side. When asked why he drives such a creature, one who should have been killed many years ago, he simply says it runs, I have always been able to spot his car and when I wasn't sure, I could walk up along the side look in the back seat and see and wonder what many others have as they walked beside it looking for their car at the local Walmart. In the back bound and stacked neatly are newspapers dating back as from as the early 1960s. In a way this very old rich man with more money than most, thinks of his old Ford as a time capsule of his life. People don't change when they have a lot of money, they change because they want to. Rich man, poor man, devil, or saint you roll the dice with life or toss that dart on the funhouse door and get what you get. Do you want to hear a story? The Teddy Bear One once said to cheer a child bring him a teddy bear. We could do this here or somewhere else, but we both know we will be right back here dear reader. I spy said the little spider hanging in the corner of your room. Let him hear. He is a happy spider or will be later when you fall asleep. As long as I have been alive and some time before people have been knocking at my door with either a Bible in one hand or a vacuum in the other. Friends are strangers someone always has something to sell. There was never the death of the salesman, he just incorporated. My father once told me the trick of the sale was to have the product in your hand as you knocked on the door. See most people's eyes are on the product and not the salesman. This is bad for the good ones and good for the bad ones. You may have never had a bad knocker, a handsome stranger dressed in black selling a bad product. I found the ones you have to worry about were the ones that grinned an evil smile that would make the devil's heart go thump. Every one of them mother used to say were, devils in Sunday hats. But it's the product that gets them and sometimes the product does the talking. That summer so long ago when asked no one could recall what the man in the black suit looked like or what his voice sounded like and no one knew his name. Now each lady down the street could tell you what the rainbow vacuum salesman looked like, they paid attention after the last one came in and sold a ton of demented devices that would explode after a few hours of use. Have you ever seen a rainbow vacuum go flying out someone's window? I have. It reminded me of what I thought the Voyager satellite would look like falling back to Earth. A large round silver ball burning brightly toward the nearest human, in protest toward the carbon life forms for sending it into space in the first place. A few children and housewives had developed a daunting fear of rainbows, but it was quickly forgotten after some corporate wig descended down from his glass office armed with new bicycles for the kids and household items for the teary-eyed housewives. I was on the front row of the step Ford wives, everything magically was forgotten and changed at his request. The salesman had power a power we were just now beginning to understand. A large newspaper contacted one of the housewives and against her agreement with the corporate office and she told her story. Most of everyone had chalked the accidents up to poor workmanship or cheap China parts, after the war anything that broken was blamed on China. The newspaper's headlines read a number of bizarre deaths plague small town, rainbow vacuums could be at fault, strangely not much was said about this. Being this was before the age of recalls it just died away as most things did in that time of our lives but it was not forgotten. Soon after I had a bad start to an early summer, I had helped the family, more like forced, an early form of child labor. To help pack and cut locust wood for the winter. Any other wood would have been better. But, locust was a poison oak attractor. Where it grew the evil plant would spring up and claim a victim. After about the third load I had to sit down and take a break, when I did a broken shard of wood that had been turned into a unholy spear went up my backside, the shard acted as a hypodermic needle depositing poison oak into my bloodstream. The morning after I closely resembled a pissed off strawberry. After a few shots and a number of visits from the man with the black bag. 
I started to slump into a dreamily warm summer. The man with the black bag has saved my life more than once. One of the things I truly miss about the days of old were the visits from the doctor. He always brought candy, now I have to go to him. As the sun beamed down on our sleepy little town, the heads of an army of salesmen rose from their cars and roadside hotels with handfuls of discounted goods. Each house received a knock from a man that looked the same and each house that had fallen victim to the rainbow incident, their children received a brand new overstuffed teddy bear. Sometime, toward the end of night screams echoed from each house on the street and though the city, as mother ran outside to find out what was going on I rolled over toward where I had sat the teddy bear. Mr. Teddy started to shake and vibrate back and forth, as a child would do. I found myself asking the poor thing if it was okay. Mr. Teddy's little button eyes popped out and what looked like little black fingers, hundreds of them covered his brown fur and what was left of his face. The lights from passing cars illumined my room and Mr. Teddy's face. Little black fingers found their way across my room and onto my bed and with each passing car I saw shiny black backs and red hourglasses. I learned three very impotent life lesions that night. 1. Mother was terrified of spiders, 2. Don't break deals with salesmen and 3. If it's black and red and a little shiny don't show your hinny. The man with the black bag made a lot of house calls over the next few days. Someone always gets to knock. Can you tell me what the last person that was selling something looked like?